Okay, we got a 2008 Mazda Tribute and we're having an issue with a sinking brake pedal. And just to talk about a few of the things that have been replaced on here, the front brake pads were bad. Those were replaced. All the other brakes have been checked. It's got drums in the rear. They've been checked. They've been ruled out. There was a few issues, but uh, nothing that was causing the sinking pedal. Now we also replaced the master cylinder, which is going to be the first thing that you are told and you hear of is replace your master cylinder. You got a sinking brake pedal. It did have some slack in it, but it still did not fix the problem. It got better, but it did not fix the issue. Now if you have a Ford Escape or a Mercury Mariner, uh, this, you're going to have the same issue. It's going to affect those around this year as well. Okay, uh, this is just a disclaimer before watching this video. I have, uh, it was basically some trial and error on my part, and I would encourage you to watch the video all the way through uh, so you don't miss any important information. You can see that we got a brand new uh, master cylinder. This is a Ray Bestos, good brand. I uh, said the old master cylinder had a little bit of slack in it. You're not supposed to be able to compress this more than an eighth of an inch with it plugged off. Now uh, it's very easy to roll your master cylinder out. You get some fittings that will fit these. After you take these lines loose, you've got fluid in it. You shouldn't be able to push that pedal any. It shouldn't have hardly any slack whatsoever, more than an eighth of an inch. Now here's what these fittings look like. Not to say that you can't find you should be able to find these at a parts store. Just check around. You should be able to get a fitting that will go in there and plug that off so you can rule that out. Uh, or, you know, like I said, in this case, it had a little more slack than it should have, so we went ahead and replaced that. Now, all the brake system has been bled. We have nice, clean fluid in here, no air. It's been bled several times, and we still have a sinking brake pedal. So basically, you know, the brakes will stop the vehicle, but what happens, the brake pedal just wants to keep going. Just keeps going where it should be stopping and getting firm. It'll just keep going. And also, it's not good for the seals in the master cylinder. So, turns out what can go bad on these is the actual ABS module. You can see it down here. You've got these lines two lines coming in from the master cylinder and then you got four lines that are going to be running off to the individual calipers and drums but you can see that it's buried down in there so we're going to have to uh, what I'm going to be doing we're going to be removing these lines capping off our master cylinder here and then you know that, that's basically how you test this and then we're going to be removing the master cylinder is getting it out of the way. It's not. It's just one more step to get it out of the way. Now, um, I'm going to show you the replacement I have here. Now, when you start doing research, you're probably not even going to hear a lot about these ABS modules going bad. They do, in fact, go bad on these Fords and uh, you know the Tributes and the Mariners. So this is my replacement. Um, if you want to put a new one on there you're going to be spending $1,000, <clears throat> anywhere from $800 to $1,000 to replace this ABS pump and module. So uh, we're going to be going with a used one. I think this one has around 100,000 miles on it. Uh, another thing you're going to need is a flare nut wrench so you're not damaging. Uh, these are really cheap. You can get a set for like $12 with several sizes and we're going to need a 13 and we're going to need a, a 14. Now these here I've already tested these are not going to be an issue they're coming loose pretty easy the my concern is the one on the vehicles we don't want to damage our fittings we don't want to damage our lines so at this point we're just going to go ahead and get started on the on the vehicle uh, this part I just the only thing I did was made sure that it came out of a 2008 
Mazda Tribute. Now it's got numbers on here that you're supposed to match up um, right here that you can look on. I'm assuming that the uh, scapes and you know Mariners and all are are going to be about the same, but I was lucky enough to find this one from a 2008 Mazda Tribute. Okay, so the very first thing we've done is chalked our wheels front and back on both the rear here. Okay, so we're going to get started up here on removing some lines in this master cylinder. The first thing I'm going to do is take this towel and put it down here so we can catch any of this brake fluid. Okay, so first up we're going to take our, our 14 and we've got our plug. We're going to take these off one at a time here. It's probably going to be pretty snug. We're just going to pop the hose out and we'll put our plug in. Hopefully we don't waste a whole lot of our brake fluid. So I'm just snugging this little plug up. I got a 15. Make sure that's not going to leak. It is plastic so I don't want to get carried away with it. Right, so we're just going to do the same thing on this side here. And while we're at it, we're going to get this connector. Just give that a push down. Just tuck that out of the way. And again, you want to have your cap ready. This one really will start leaking on you at the back we'll snug that up okay so so far we're not making too much of a mess now we're going to get a hold of these 13s here that are actually holding this master cylinder on like I said there's absolutely no point in uh, or benefit to leaving this here in the way Okay, so I just got my 13 on here. I'll go ahead and take these locking, Teflon nut locking nuts off. And then we can just set our master cylinder completely out of the way and free up some room. Okay, so there's that one. And another little tip when putting these lines back, it's a good idea to leave the master cylinder somewhat loose because then you don't run the risk of cross threading. So I'm just getting the one over here on this other side. So, so far not too bad. <clears throat> you can see we've got this loose. You can see that our master cylinder is capped off so it's not leaking any fluid anywhere. Okay, so I'm just getting the last one off and we can completely pull this up and out of the way. Right, so careful with your lines. Okay, so my towel is really not going to do me any good at this point. Um, we're going to get down here and get to work on... Um, getting this bracket and stuff loose here um, we may go ahead and remove this uh, air box it may not be totally necessary but it's going to help me to to uh, definitely video here we'll just get started with this that'll pull up we've got a eight millimeter band pull that safety lock also got a little clip needs pulled out right there okay the box has a 10 millimeter right here
Okay, so we've got the eight millimeter band I was talking about there. I should be able to wiggle this loose. Okay, so this box snaps into another duct, so you kind of kind of pull it back this way up. And then we got to go under this cable right here. Just like that. We're going to go ahead and take our negative loose here. Okay, so we got quite a bit more room here. I'm all but certain that shift and cable's gonna get in my way, but I'm gonna leave it be for now, as long as it will not get in my way. But you can see um, that we can get in here and we can see a little bit of something now. We can see two of our mounting bolts right there. <clears throat> And we've got, like I said, we've got four lines that are coming off of here that we're going to have to disconnect as well. Okay, so I want to show you what's going to be tricky for us. This bracket right here has a couple, you know, the fittings run into this. And then the, these run up and connect up here. I believe it's the 13s. Um, there is a 10 millimeter right there. I can barely feel it, but I know where it's at because of the relation to the wire. That's what we're going to remove. We're going to pop this uh, wire probably off out of our way as well. And we're going to take this 10 millimeter loose. It's going to free up these lines and my hopes is that we'll be able to simply take them loose from up here and it'll we'll be able to pull this uh, pump up and out of here let me show you over here okay so i was showing you the wrong ones it's these right here these run to another that other junction these ones that are on the front right there they're running that other junction piece now what I can do I can feel I said right under here and I can feel that that 10 millimeter nut I'm gonna take that loose and we're going to we're gonna remove these and we're gonna remove these two we're not there's really no need to take um, well we'll have to transfer these over um, but there's really no need to take these here off. But we need to remove these. And we need to remove these on the front here. So these are the two ones coming from the, the, the master cylinder there. And uh, the, as far as the bolts go, you can see the two here. And you can see the third one hiding down there on the bottom. So those, I'm going to use my ratchet wrench. I don't really think they're going to give me any problems. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and see what, what we're going to need to remove. We may have to get our fuel line out of the way here. It's not really a big deal. Okay, so I'm down here with a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench and I can't really show you that nut that I was showing you on that plastic bracket there but that's what I'm removing down here so this is not really it's not been hard to break loose at all I'm pretty much getting it with my fingers at this point but I am having to reach down here now really I can't really see doing this without that air box out. Now that I'm working on this right here, I really think you need to have the air box out. So I've almost got it, I do believe. Okay, so those feel loose. 
Okay, to avoid any mishaps before we just go to popping these lines loose, we have labeled each one of them. Now we're going to also take some air and spray this off a little bit, just to kind of get the dirt out of the way. We don't want any dirt getting in lines and things, and we're putting it back together. Okay, before we get everything to dripping real good, I'm going to go ahead and take two of these bolts. I'm just using a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench here. There's the bottom most. Um, these have not been real tight, so I don't see them being a lot of trouble uh, unless they've Yours has rust, but these have not been very tight. I'm gonna leave that top one there. But I wanna go ahead and get these other two out so I just don't have fluid dripping everywhere. Now this wire has to pop off as well. It's on the bracket just like that lower one. There's the second one. So these clips, you want to, you're going to have to get those out of your way. This uh, fuel line is for certain to get in the way. I'm just going to pop it up and out of this clip. You can just take a screwdriver and just pop this thing out of here. And you got to be careful with the line. I was able to pull it up and get a little bit of slack. I just don't know. Uh, this still may have to come loose right here. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to have the gas dripping though. But I think we're going to go ahead and get started on these lines here. And these are going to be the 13s. Let's we'll see how difficult they're going to be. Okay, that one was real easy. It's kind of tricky to get in here. Now these over here are 14s, looks like, on the front. I'm going to focus on these right here first. And it looks like this fuel line is doing everything to get in the way, so it may have to come out of here. But these are super easy to get loose. I was really thinking these were going to be trouble but so far these are coming real easy I think I can get those the rest of the way by hand and I can you see I'm just turning it there so I've got these labeled they're marked on the the module itself so there's no worries of me getting them mixed up if that were even possible. Okay, so I'm just working on this other one and I've got this fuel line stuff in my way here a little bit. But I'm still able to get to it. I'm just going to keep it this other one here. I just switched over to my regular box wrench since uh regular wrench since I've got it broke loose there's no danger of hurting this flare nut and I've got a paper towel here because I do have some fluid the only unknown I have here is if I'm gonna have to take this fuel line or not just depend on if I can fit this up and through here. All right, so looks like I finally got that loose, maybe. This one here's being a little more difficult than the other one. Okay, so there we have those two free. Okay, so 
and we may have to leave the other uh, fittings on until we get this into place okay so now I'm getting the 14s up on the front here okay so I just switch over to my other wrench because it's just easier once it's loose almost got to this one and then I just got the one in the back there to get loose and you can see with that bracket off down there how much slack I've got with this one I can completely pull that out of there so we're gonna work on the back one now and then I'm just gonna see what we need to do to avoid these lines and carefully pull this out of here we do not want to be bending these lines Okay, the actual brake lines, in case I was calling those 14s, are actually 13s. These are all 13s. I'm just getting the last one here loose. And then I'll take that final 13 millimeter bolt on the bracket and we'll see what we can do with it. And then I've got these flex lines for the master cylinder that um, may help me to kind of pull it up and out. So we'll get our last remaining bracket bolt here. Now I assumed from the get-go that I was going to be removing that connector after I pulled it up and out of here, but we're going to see. We'll find out. Um, before I forget, or I may repeat this, but hang on to this old module. It may be that you have to take it and have it programmed if you need to get the light turned off. But you have to um, have something that can flash the old module if there is an issue. And basically, okay, there's our final boat transfer that information over to the new one all right so kind of got to be careful with these these lines here so I'm gonna have to figure out what we need to do to orient this here I got the lines on top and lots of stuff in the way here okay so those there's a low bracket I didn't even notice on the other one there they had to pop that out but still I said these lines don't have a lot of play in them it doesn't seem and I'm basically trying to move it around without bending on these lines any So I'm going to keep working with it. It could be that I have to do this in a different manner here. Okay, what I've realized, I think we're going to remove these 13s from the bottom. You can see one fitting is different than the others. Um, so I'm going to go under, even though I've already got it loose. I think I'm going to go under and take those loose. Okay, so I scratched the idea with the brake lines. Uh, we got it pulled up here. As you can see, I'm going to disconnect this connector over here, which is pretty simple. If I can just get to it, I'll show you on the other one. Okay, so you're going to squeeze in here and give that a pull up. And then it'll just pop off of there. So we're going to do on the other one. Okay, so, so I'm just exploring my simplest options here. I got the connector off. I don't know if it's going to help me out much except for maybe slipping these lines past this thing. Because this is my biggest problem. Is trying to be careful. Okay, so I'm just having to carefully work it up and out of here. I would really like 
if this bracket was not on here, I think this would go a lot easier. And I think that's probably how we're going to go back in with it. Okay, we finally have wiggled this up and out of here a lot of effort so going back on this bracket is definitely going to go on after i'll put it down in there set this into place and then mount the bracket with those torques okay so good news so far these numbers actually match up that's the number that you need to check and how in the world you're supposed to see it i don't know with it buried in there but these actually match up so hopefully we don't have any issues so anyways uh, we're going to go over here and take this bracket off so honestly i don't even care if i can only get one or two of these torques um let's see what is this i'm using here T30 to take these these are holding it to the bracket and they got lock tied on them and everything so this is the one that's the replacement I'm taking these off we're gonna put our bracket into place and we'll attempt to get down there by some means and get our little bolts here. I may have to get a micro ratchet or something, but I really am not dealing with all the difficulty of, and you can see this um, bracket, let's take that. We got one more over on this side. Go ahead and take that out. And if it turns out I can only get this one up here that's easy to get in, I'm going to lock tight it and so be it because you can see this thing is not going anywhere. These set down in here where it's setting, uh, there is no way even with this one this pump is going anywhere but it is very difficult to remove with that bracket on as far as the method of removal i'm just going to tell you the to um you know turn it and flip it until you can get it to relent and um, be careful while you're at it with your lines and stuff and as for this with these lines i'm just taking this one because it's still on the lines over there it just all it does is slip on that stud locates it and then tighten up that 10 millimeter so this is what we're going to put down in there first and we're going to go in with our pump and set this in place. I'm going to leave these on here for now. They're loose. I don't want trash and stuff getting in to these. Alright, so we're going to work this down in here carefully. We want to leave that wire. Just gonna, remember this got a little bracket here that kind of locates it. into that little pig okay so we got our bracket just set in place and we got the lines about where they need to be we're going to loosely start the bolt here for starters we may not even be able to do that um, let me see if I can start the one down on the very very bottom here
just kind of want it loosely just where it's not falling about like that but we can always take that back out now I'm going to see if I can't get my other part fit in here all right just got the bracket setting there we're getting ready I've got the upper lines on already because it was much easier to use these to lower it into place. Now I may have to take that bolt back out. Look like I'm having trouble fitting this as it is here. So we're just gonna go on and remove. I just got the one bolt holding the bracket there. I'm gonna go on and remove that. What makes it difficult is that bracket has that little bar that, that kind of locates it and it doesn't allow you to move it so we're going with this method it seems to be going in here pretty well all right so once i got that set where i need it i'll just kind of set this bracket back up here and i think we'll go ahead and we'll reconnect the connector and we'll start working these lines back into place here. So the amount of room you have here is really tricky with everything. And uh, so we just got the connector looped back under the bottom here. And uh, I'm gonna try to work it back down into place. Okay, so the connector is locked. That's probably one of the more difficult things. So while we're loose, I am going to start these because I'm all but certain that I knocked my alignment off on them slightly. So I'm gonna start these. Okay, and this one I actually had in the wrong place. It goes in here, inside of this bracket. Okay, so this is a second one here. I'm starting this, just finger tighten it. It'll be easier this way, that way I don't have any alignment issues. And then we're gonna go ahead and get, so I'm leaving these in place until we get them started so we're not getting any debris in here all right so i'm just going to get this one started i said make sure that you get these started with your fingers you don't want to uh get anything cross-threaded <clears throat> and see as we get these you know we get these threaded down by hand as we um, got these into alignment we can easily move the body of this around put it where it needs to go and then the lines will naturally you know if they did get bent slightly they will go back to the position they need to be in that's not a problem we just want to make sure that we don't cross thread these because it's all over if you mess these up So I'm just um, got one more line on the back there and like I said I'm not worried about even if I can only put Loctite one of those torques in this I'm not worried about it this this is not going anywhere so uh, I'm gonna try to get get the others in but if I can't I'm not gonna worry about it it's just uh, it's pretty difficult I know to get underneath 
So what, what I would want to do is try to get the torques in before I put the bolts mounted up here for sure in case I need some slack. So I just got one more here at the back to hook up. The others are hooked up. I don't really have them tied at this point. I'm going to finish snugging them down once I get the body into place and then we'll make sure that those are nice and snug. So we're just going to get this here into alignment. Okay, I, I can't stress the importance of getting these lines in the right location. For starters, I had this on the outside and I went to put the 10 millimeter in the little plastic clamp that clamps these small lines coming off to the bottom. So I had to take and uh, had to get that line back loose the bracket and take it back out and get this on the right side. So make sure that you've got your lines in the exact location or it will not go together and you'll be taking it back apart. Okay, so like I said, I got the 10 millimeter on that bottom clamp. I'm getting ready just to put the bolts, the three 13s up here. We're gonna lock tight those in. I've already tried to put these in the bottom. Just forget about it. You're not gonna be able to get it. There's just no room. Uh, we're gonna put the one here and lock tight it. It'll be plenty tight enough. So we get to work on that. So what you're gonna find is gonna make this a really aggravating job is there's simply, it's not that there's just little room, there's just no room. And it gets really, really aggravating to say the least when you're trying to get the things. You know, with as far as the, you know, I did get, was able to get the whole bracket out, but you know, I was having a, I was really nervous with the line, so that's why I didn't want to put it back in that way. Simply not necessary. This one bolt here, when it's tightened down, it is, it is really tight. It's not going to move. So I'm just working these in. And we're going to go ahead and snug these 13 millimeters up. So I'm just using this 13 millimeter ratchet wrench. It's working out pretty good. So I'm just giving these the final snug. Okay, so we're just locked tight in this little T30 back in. And you can see, you know, it's got movement. Now when we tighten this up, it will not be able to move. This has definitely got to be one of the least fun parts to get to on these vehicles. Okay, so um, we're gonna take our 13 and our 14. And we're gonna go back through and we're gonna make sure all these fittings are good and tight. We have the bracket <coughs> all tightened down. Everything is where it's supposed to be. The harness is on. So we're good and we're just gonna snug those fittings up. You can see it's, I mean, other than getting this thing in here, it's just, okay, so that's pretty snug. And I'm gonna have to get my magnet and get that. All right, so we're just getting these good and tight. And I'm just kind of putting a hand on it because remember we only got one screw we were able to get in there. Okay, so we double checked all of our fittings, 13s, 14s were already tight. And you'll notice that these are like, when I tighten these, they're pointed directly straight, like they're gonna be going into the master cylinder there. I'll just clip this wire back in here. 
Okay, so the worst is over. We just got to get our master cylinder back in place here. All right, so once we make sure that rod's centered, go ahead and get our 13 millimeters back on and snug this in place and we'll just do like we um, we took the lines off we'll just take them one at a time and attach them and take our plug out there and I'm going to just leave this a little bit loose until I get this into place as well it's going to give me some more slack Okay, and we got our towel here as well. And if you have trouble, you know, lining it up, then you may have to crack your line on the bottom loose. And we'll just snug this one up. So. The idea is to hopefully get the line in here and get it into place before we make a big mess. Now this one is, I mean if it's off just a little, it is not going to go into a place here. I've got it loose, but it's going to take me a minute. Okay, so this one was a little more difficult for whatever reason. I had to kind of wiggle it and if you want to make sure you get it started good, absolutely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snug these both up real good and we're gonna to top it off with fluid. And we'll have to purge the ABS. Um, if you don't have a way of doing that, just bleed the air out like you normally would. Which we're going to do that as well. So we can go ahead and finish tightening these up. We'll give them a final snug. Those flare nuts there. And you'll have to check these fittings for leaks. You know, anytime you disturb something, it usually wants to leak. Unfortunately. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and top this off, get it full. And we should notice, even with air, we should notice a difference in this pedal from the get-go. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on everything. Keep a check for leaks, but we'll go ahead and we'll purge the system here. Okay, so we went ahead and we hooked up our negative. We're going to go ahead and leave the air box out because we're not going to be able to see nothing with it in the way. We we'll go ahead and connect our scan tool up here. Okay, we'll just go ahead and turn the key on. Okay, so we're just going to be doing the the ABS bleed, bleeding the air out of the pump. And then we'll just move on to we'll move on to the manual. So this will take just a minute. It's pretty simple. You got to push on the brake with one foot. It'll give you all the 
the information here. Just verify that. I mean, I don't know that you couldn't just bleed it the normal way, but I'm assuming, you know, changing out the ABS, you're going to have a lot of air in there, so you're probably going to need to do this or have this done. <clears throat> so here we go. And so it just gives you the information. We'll just go ahead and hit OK. We got our foot on the brake. It'll it'll bleed it out about three times, or it should. If it doesn't, we got a problem. So we should get one more. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start bleeding it manually. I'm going to be using some tubing. All this is clean. And we're going to start the rear passenger. And then we're going to go driver's passenger. And then we're going to go to the front passenger and then front drivers just from the farthest up and start working the air out each one okay here we are back at this and this is uh several weeks later and uh hopefully this is going to save someone else a lot of trouble a lot of headache uh, the part over here on the right was the used part that i put on the car and um, long story short this part turned out to be no good as well and I even was having my doubts so I took it to a shop they got the pressure bleeders you know really really good machines to see if there was any air in there and turns out that this unit is bad also so first thing I don't recommend getting a used hydraulic unit or ABS pump uh, over here on the left, we have a remanufactured one, a rebuilt, and it was about um, $250, uh, 270 or so with tax or whatever, <clears throat> but uh, this thing has been rebuilt. So, you know, with the used ones, you don't know what condition it's in, um, and this is a lot of work, so I wouldn't recommend it in this case, and these are prone to failure, so it's a very good possibility that you're gonna you know get a bad one and go through all this work so I definitely recommend for the price a little bit more just getting a rebuilt one next thing um, this module right here okay so what you're gonna want to do because if you put the replacement module on your car it is not going to work properly and it's gonna set off the lights gonna have to be programmed so to avoid that what we're gonna do is transfer the um, our module over to the other one. Now, I've actually had already done that, but I'm going to show you because we're going to be taking this one and putting over on this one over here the reman. But I'm going to show you how this gets removed. So very easy to remove this. You just got these screws. I'm going to show you, and then this simply pulls off. Is like this and then you've got your original module no programming required and no issues and lights coming on if your modules good if not I'd probably recommend getting it you know rebuilt so uh, anyways we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna show you removing this one and we're gonna put it over here on our rebuilt hydraulic unit so we're going to be using a T20, um, got this attached to a ratchet here, these may be fairly tight, but you're going to need, the main thing is you're going to need something slim or the screwdriver type that's going to be able to get in here. You're not going to get it with a little stubby one like, like this, it's not going to get in there. So you need one with a little bit of an extension to get 
to be able to get in here. So let's go ahead and so yeah, you're gonna definitely need a ratchet on there. These are quite quite snug. So this is very easy and avoids a lot of trouble. Um, so initially with the replacement, it set off all kinds of lights and it's doubtful that it would have even worked. So we're going to go ahead and flip this over and we'll get the other ones. Okay, so we just turned it over here on its side. We're going to get these other ones. So that if you pay attention to any part of the video, this is probably the most important part. Because this is definitely going to save you a lot of trouble transferring your module. So if your module's bad, you know, you could get it rebuilt or, you know, you wouldn't have no choice but to program it. So we're going to go ahead and just separate this. And you can see the seals in here. So you can see all these seals. And when they rebuild these, you get new seals and everything. I don't know if I previously talked about this. Uh, this is the number you want to match up when you order your rebuilt part. Now you can also send your whole unit in to have it rebuilt, but you're going to have to wait on it a lot longer. You got to ship it and then wait on it to get shipped back. So that this is the number here that you want to match. Okay, so now we're just going to take and slip this together. See in that It's only going to go one way. Just fasten that in there. And we'll go ahead and get our screws back in here. I'm just going to be snugging these down. These, if you were going to torque them, I wouldn't torque them much. Maybe 50 inch pounds. But I'm just going to get them snug down with my little quarter inch ratchet here once I get them all into place. But you see how easy this is to swap. It takes, you know, just minutes. And it's one less thing to have to worry about. Said unless you have a problem with the module itself, which usually it's always the pump and the hydraulic part. Okay, so I'm just going to finish snugging these down. Okay, so we just barely snug those with the quarter inch. I mean, that's a plat piece of plastic, and it's a small, tiny bolt going into that aluminum. So um, we're going to go ahead and get our um, lines on here. I like to get those on the top first. And uh, may try to slip it down in there with a bracket on this time, but basically going to do the procedure over just like I um, showed before and uh, said as far as you know the removal and replacement of this it's not bad the uh, t most time consuming is bleeding the brakes and for this procedure um, I actually have to bleed it and then do the ABS bleed and then bleed the brakes again that's what how we're supposed to do it so um, basically I'm going to go ahead and get the um, lines back on here and the bracket. I think we're going to start feeding it back down into the, the vehicle. We'll just follow up once we get this installed. Okay, we're putting this rebuilt one in here. I just wanted to point a few things out because I've had these out several times now. Uh, it's really not any more difficult to slip this down in here with a bracket. 
and I initially thought it was, but it, it's really not. Just slip it in there and just work your lines back over. Uh, another thing, this back line down here, if you can see the one in the very back right back in there, that is the one that I start with, with the bolts loose, because that's the most difficult one to get to and tighten it. And I actually uh, will go ahead and try to get that one pretty well snugged up before working on the rest of them. And you kind of just do these lines one at a time. And what I found was that doing these down here, so you do the back one and then this one, and then you work on your top ones. And then you get the, you know, the back top one and then the front top one. So just a few things there. Um, as long as you hold this, you can snug them all down with it loose. And I found that to be a little bit easier with lining them up so you the most uh, important thing of all is just do not cross thread these get them started by hand and then you can go ahead and snug them up but other than that I've already got the the wire connector on first and then I'm gonna work on the lines and then we'll just go on from there and then the master cylinder is real simple and um, we'll start the bleed procedure probably May just as well go ahead and take the wheels off this time to make things a little bit easier because I basically got to bleed it twice. All right, we got everything back on. Again, um, the master cylinder's full, and I've just went ahead. We took all these wheels off, and we're of course going to start back at the rear here. So I'm just going to show you what I've got. And I got this from Advance. It's just a vacuum pump. You know, you can purchase one of these. I rarely use one, but um, this is going to be the first uh, bleed procedure before we do the ABS bleed. We got to bleed the brakes. And, you know, we're going to start back here and we're going to take out about a, you know, a little bit of a canister on each wheel. And then we'll refill it and we'll do our ABS bleed that I showed you before. And then we'll do another bleed again after we do that. So I'm just going to start back here. Now these are pretty simple to use. The only thing uh, you have to make sure of is where you're coming from your caliper. This tube goes down in the canister and this one doesn't have a tube on this side. So it's not sucking fluid back into the pump there. And just got a line from there and then another line going to our wheel cylinder here okay so I had to get a different one because the one that the loaner tool wasn't working and I'm just gonna get a bunch of this fluid out and um, so basically um, you want to do this because you're gonna have so much air in the system that you can ruin your master cylinder because it's just going to want to drop to the floor so we're going to have to get all of this air out another thing about these fittings back here is hold on a second okay so you may have to put a little dab of uh, grease around your bleeder screw you're gonna it's gonna be um, sucking in air bubbles and that's about the only way to stop it to get it to hold vacuum you don't want to exceed about 10 15 psi think they were saying but anyways we're just going to do this we're starting on the back um, the passenger here and we're just going to work our way around we get get this air out we're going to you know, take about a half a canister probably at a time and just work our way around okay so I just performed the ABS bleed that I showed you prior and I'm getting ready to go back around we're going to do hopefully the final bleed from each of the wheels Okay, so it turned out that I had to do way more bleeding than just the bleed, ABS bleed, and the bleed again. I mean, it. Uh, when I did the first ABS bleed, I had a massive amount of air in there. So I wound up bleeding it six times. Uh, just wanted to point some things out. Don't push the brake pedal more than three quarters of the way down. You could ruin your master cylinder. Um, when I was bleeding it, what I wound up getting to work the best was 
having uh, someone to pump while I was vacuuming, it would get it out of there much quicker. Um, I would definitely recommend using a pressure bleeding type tank, and I'm going to leave a link to that. Um, but going back to the um, when I first I had a little bit of firmness when I first bled it but the pedal was still pretty soft when I did the ABS bleed pedal just fell to the floor pretty much and um, that's where you can uh, ruin your master cylinder so what I had found somehow or another it had gotten some air up here trapped at the master cylinder I still don't really understand it but um, I'll show you where I cracked it loose so long story short I figured this out by capping this off and testing this thing but anyway um, it was the master cylinder was fine so I put these back on it had some air and you know you just you crack it you have someone push the pedal and hold it you crack it loose get the air repeat it a few times you come to this one do the same thing but that's what it was it must have shot some air up into there and got trapped and it was making the pedal super soft it seems like after I did that 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 pretty much solved 99% of the air issue and then I proceeded to bleed it a few more times and also I performed the ABS bleed uh, three different times now each time it got much firmer I guess you could say you could really feel it the first time basically wasn't pushing back on the pedal at all the second time pushed back more the third time it felt really good and firm so at that point I felt like all the air was out of the ABS or the hydraulic block there now like I said I've done the the bleed six times you may not have to do it that much and I probably wouldn't have done it that many times had I realized that there was air up at the master cylinder that needed to be bled out uh, as far as you know if you want more peace of mind you could once you get the brakes working good enough you could take it to a shop I was you know getting quotes of like 75 to 100 dollars they have a machine that can bleed them out um, and you know as far as replacing this ABS unit you're looking at you know just in my area anywhere from 250 to 400 dollars from to do it and bleed the brakes and the part <clears throat> I was probably already talking about was two hundred and seventy five dollars this is for a rebuilt part uh, that's two seventy five with tax there's an additional hundred dollar core charge that you'll get back once you send your own unit in you just want to make sure you match up that part number and everything okay I just wanted to show you you know we got a nice firm pedal uh, the pedal drop or sink has gone away we'll go ahead and crank it up and it does drop some as you got the booster kicking in but you can see it's going that far and when it stops it stops nice and firm it doesn't go any farther so that ABS the hydraulic unit is uh, definitely the issue now the only other thing that you know this vehicle could use is some some rear brake drum shoes. But other than that, it's um, it's uh, definitely a hundred percent improvement. All right, so if you've ruled out your master cylinder and you're still getting the sinking brake pedal, the it's a very very good chance that this the hydraulic unit on uh, the ABS is going to be your issue so um, you know I tried to it was a little bit of a trial and error through this um, definitely I wouldn't go with a used one again it was a lot of trouble a lot of extra second guessing because I had another another bad part so um, if you you know you get you a rebuilt unit or whatever the new ones are hard to find they're very expensive I hear they're on back order um, 
But if you get you a good rebuilt unit on there, I'm going to leave a link to where I got this. Um, you know, when you first get it together, you're going to have massive amounts of air. So just don't get discouraged thinking, oh, you know, there's a big problem. Just uh, take your time, uh, bleed the brakes, check the master cylinder, crack those screws loose, make sure, you know, have somebody push it and hold it, make sure you got no air there, and then just go around and bleed it and check it and just keep bleeding it. Uh, you will most likely, I've had to do the ABS bleed three different times because every time that I got, once I got most of the air out, I feel like the ABS bleed was actually doing some good. But, you know, initially, I don't think it was pushing it all out. But I did it three different times and, you know, basically went around and just bled the brakes every time and it would get a little bit better. And I did it, you know, three more times just to make sure that I had had this air out of here. So, anyways, I hope that, you know, this can... Uh, uh, help someone else out. It's definitely been kind of a headache for me. So, um, you know, I want to try to cover everything that I ran into and stuff to help someone else out. So that's going to do it for the video. <clears throat> I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do so. As always, I invite you to subscribe and thank you for watching.